Minimalism seems like it's a trend that's here to stay. A lot of us realize that we don't need tons of stuff to make us happy, but we often don't know how to get rid of the stuff that we've already accumulated. Well, over the years, we've made lots of videos here at Clean My Space all about the subject of minimalism and how to get there. My approach to minimalism is perhaps a little bit different than what else is out there. I try to take an approachable approach to minimalism. It's welcoming, it's straightforward, and the most important thing for me is that it's not overwhelming, it doesn't seem drastic, and it seems possible and doable. Because we get so many questions about minimalism and how to start and where to get started and how do I get over this hump, I figured that we would pull together some of our favorite tips and methods and ideas on how to practice minimalism or bring it into your life. So we've put this rather long video together to help you get there. I hope you enjoy it. If this is your first time watching a Clean My Space video, welcome. I encourage you to subscribe by just hitting that button. It's always good to have channels that you can trust in your back pocket and we will be there for you. If you wanna be notified about each and every video of ours that comes out, you can always hit that notification bell as well. And I always ask people at the beginning of the video to give this one a thumbs up just because it's a nice thing to do for a YouTube creator. You know, give them a thumbs up. Learning to say no can be oh so hard, but it is one of the best skills you can develop. And I found that saying no to free samples, souvenirs, and things from well-meaning people like hand-me-downs can actually help me reduce the amount of clutter in my home. I was recently at a store and they gave away gift bags that day and I actually just turned the gift bag down because there was nothing in there that I really wanted. Now, of course, if I did want something in there, sure, I would have taken it, but I knew that I didn't need it, so I left it there. The same thing happened to me when I was in Palm Springs. I did this really cool tram ride up to the top of a mountain and they were handing out these keychains and everyone took them. But then I said to the lady, thanks, but no thanks, because I'm not gonna use it. So that was a great way just to not bring that clutter home with me. And even hand-me-downs or things from well-meaning friends or family members. If you don't need it and you're not gonna use it, you can just politely say no, but thank them for the gesture. Start small. So for example, if you decide that you want to declutter your closet, muzzle tug, great move, but you feel overwhelmed and then you kind of feel down because you're like, I don't have nine hours, I don't want to spend my whole day on this, cool. All you need to do is pick one area that you want to start with. So for example, let's say you start with your jeans. All you need to do is look at your jeans and decide which ones you're going to keep and which ones you're going to part with. Then once you've decluttered your jeans area of your closet, you can decide that you wanna move on to something else or you can pick up a day later. Sometimes chunking it down makes it feel more manageable, but if you've done the jeans and you feel really good, you kinda of have that high, you can ride the wave and that positive reinforcement cycle might help carry you through to declutter other things in your closet too. You never know until you try. Just so you guys know, we do read as many comments as humanly possible. We get hundreds and hundreds a day, but one stuck out to us, so I wanted to address it here. And somebody said, Melissa, how can I take decluttering advice from you when you went from living in a small house to moving into a much larger home? And it's true, we did jump in square footage moving into this home, but what Chad and I have tried to do in this space, and I think we've done it quite well, is we've learned to embrace open, empty space. Now, I'm not saying that I wanna live sparsely with nothing exciting or beautiful to look at, but in our old house, we just had a lot of stuff in there that wasn't serving us, and then once we managed to declutter and strip it down, and even to the day we moved, we were still doing that work, you know, it didn't make a difference because that space wasn't right for what we were looking for in our lives. We wanted a bigger home where we could have friends and family over and, you know, have kids and make memories. Like we just wanted the space. Plus we had the yard and we had the pool. It was something that really meant a lot to us. So that's why we moved into this house. We didn't move into this house because we wanted to fill it with more stuff. So in fact, no matter what space you're in, so long as it suits your needs and your lifestyle, there's a way that you can approach minimalism by simply living in a space that's not cluttered. So instead of the urgency to find a room and like find things to fill it with, and I'm not saying not to decorate, but I'm just saying to be mindful about the way you decorate it. So don't clutter up a space with extra things that you don't necessarily need. Be very careful, particular, and mindful about how you set your spaces up so that you're not just filling them out because of course, anytime you see a large open space, our urge is to want to fill it with stuff, 
but that's when you can sort of teeter onto the side of being a little too cluttered and not living in that minimalist lifestyle. So it's a little bit of a mindset change. I recommend cleaning out your closet twice a year. Once when the fall winter hits and once when the spring summer hits. When you do those change outs, you're gonna look through all of the clothes from the past season and you'll see the stuff that you haven't worn or that you don't really like anymore and you can sort of put that in a pile and move away from it. Doing this closet clean out twice a year is super helpful and it helps you get rid of that stuff. But if you haven't done that in a while, it might be a really good time for you to take a long, hard look at the clothes you have in your closet, decide anything that you haven't worn in the last 12 months, get rid of that, put it in a donation pile, and move on from it. I recently did that in my closet. I was doing my biannual closet changeover, but I was also getting rid of stuff that wasn't gonna fit me anymore, not at least while I was pregnant, and I put that in a box. And it freed up so much space in my closet. So now when I go in there to get dressed, I can actually just pick from things that fit me well and that I like. And that is the best part about getting dressed in the morning. We've all heard of the five second rule. But there's now the six second rule for minimalist living. And that is pick up the item and ask yourself, do I need this? Do I use this? Do I love this? And if you can't really answer yes to any of those questions, then you've probably explained to yourself why you don't need that item anymore. So I'm just thinking about, you know, one of those as seen on TV stores, you buy an item and you think, oh yeah, this thing's gonna, you know, make my abs tighter or make my bacon crispier or whatever it is. And then you buy it, you bring it home, you might use it one time, two times, and then you store it. And you think, yeah, maybe I'll use it one day and you kind of never do. When you're going through your space, always be critical, pick up that item, give yourself six seconds, and really consider whether you need it or not. It's easy to say that we'll donate a pile of stuff at some point in the future, but when does that actually come? And in Clean My Space videos, we've talked about how Chad and I have what we call a waste station in our house. So for those of you who have seen our videos many times before, you know about the waste station, but for those of you who don't, it's a little area that we have where we put things that we think we don't want anymore. Now at any point while that item is in the waste station, we can go and take it back if we really truly do need it or miss it. But most of the time we put stuff in that waste station, we never think about it again. And the one thing I will say is that we are not the best at actually taking stuff from that waste station and donating it. It usually piles up quite high and then we kind of look at it and think, oh yeah, we really gotta get on that. So this is a reminder for us, but also a reminder for you, that if you have things piling up and you know you wanna donate them, make today that day. Just put it in your trunk, take it and drop it off at a donation center. I can assure you that as soon as we're done filming this video, I'm loading up my car and I am doing just that. Pruning your items on a regular basis shouldn't just be something that you do once a year around spring cleaning to be something that becomes part of your daily habits or your lifestyle. And over the past couple of years, it's something that Chad and I have really brought into our own home. To give you an example of what this actually looks like, when I do my laundry and everything's clean, before I fold and put it away, I'll sort of sort through everything and pick out those garments that I'm not wearing anymore. This is just one example of how you can do the same thing. So I just got rid of a bunch of old workout clothes that I didn't really love anymore because I had recently got some new stuff and there was no point of having the old stuff around. But you can do this with magazines, newspapers, items around your home, you know, just incorporate it into your day and you'll see it's a lot easier to keep your home decluttered. When you're ready to cook something, you want access to your small appliances that you actually use, like my spiralizer, which I use all the time. And I don't wanna to have to dig through things that I never touch, like a pasta baker or a small little blender like this magic bullet here. If you go through your kitchen and you find that you have these small appliances that you haven't used in a year, because let's be honest, some things you're only gonna use once a year, it's time to move on from it. There's no need to keep it. You're probably not gonna find a use for it anytime soon, and someone else will probably benefit from it more than you would. Admittedly, I'm not the best at tidying up, although I have to say in my years since starting Clean My Space, I am much better than I used to be. One of the things that I know makes a huge difference for me, and I know has made such a big difference for many of you, is to tidy up nightly and to put things back in their home or in their place. Now this habit, when I do it, you know, Chad and I kind of share duties, so sometimes I do it, sometimes he does it. When I do it, 
It helps me know and kind of take inventory of everything that I have. So I have a really good understanding of, do I have to add something to my shopping list? Is that a duplicate? Wait, where does this thing go? Oh gosh, I have to file that. Like there are just inherent tasks that have to happen when I'm doing this tidy up. And that is so important because your house or your home is sort of like, it's this living, breathing thing. And the things that flow through it are like blood throwing through, flowing through veins. You know, it always, it's moving, it's changing, it's dynamic, and we have to be attentive to that. So if we're not doing that, things get cluttered up and you can't live in this sort of minimal clean space. The other thing about minimalism is when you're doing this tidying up, it makes you think about each and every item. And perhaps you'll notice, I don't need this anymore, or this piece of paper, this happened to be this weekend. I saw a pile of paper, I said, this has been here for too long, I'm dealing with it now. So when you're doing stuff like that, it really encourages you to be very critical of anything and everything in your space and deal with it because one eyesore is really gonna start to drive you crazy. And that's coming from me, a recovering slob. And then there are those items that we have some inherent sentimental attachment to, which feel practically impossible to get rid of. These could be anything from love letters to tickets from old concerts, children's toys, clothing, that kind of stuff. Stuff that either you've kept with you for a long time or it's been handed to you generation to generation. And these items are typically associated with a lot of guilt. So if we get rid of them, it's like we're getting rid of that memory or we're saying it's not important anymore. And I know that this is pretty much the hardest category to go through and declutter. And we've actually done a whole video on how to get rid of sentimental clutter below. And I'm not ruthless, trust me guys. I know what this feels like because I got my own piles of stuff that I need to deal with and that I have dealt with. So. I go through this with you gingerly, but it is a really important step because you can get rid of a lot of things while you're still honoring the item or the memory itself. There are lots of ways to do that. Think about this when it comes to cleaning products. Rather than purchasing a whole bunch of items that serve specialty cleaning jobs, you can look for pantry items that we always talk about here at Clean My Space, like vinegar, baking soda, dish soap, that kind of stuff, and make your own cleaning products. That way you don't have to store as much and you can use the vinegar and the baking soda and the dish soap for other things as well. And of course, if you need any cleaning recipes, you can always visit cleanmyspace.com or you can watch one of our other videos about making your own cleaning products. Now, this theory extends out into kitchen products and tools and for self-care or bathroom products and tools as well. There are lots of ways that you can double duty a lot of things in your home to save space but still get the same functionality. I'm sure this will resonate with you. If you go around your house and take a look, you'll probably find shoe boxes or electronics boxes or old jewelry boxes. I don't know, but stuff that you've bought probably came in a box. You might've thought it was a good idea to keep the box. Now, if you're using the box to actually store something in it, perfect, keep it. But if you're not, if you think you might use it in the future, you probably are not going to, so just get rid of it. I have an experiment for those of you who wanna stick your toe into the pool of minimalism, but aren't quite sure how to get there. Here's what to do. All of the surfaces in your home, you're gonna clear everything from those surfaces. You're gonna find a home for wherever those items need to go temporarily. Now the period of time you're gonna try this experiment for is up to you. You can do a week, maybe two weeks, but the idea here is you're just gonna experience what it feels like to live in a very sparse home, very clean, clear, decluttered space. Now you might think, but you know, I need this thing here. You'll find a drawer for it. Trust me, you'll, you'll manage. But the idea here is you come in and you realize, how do I feel about living with less? How do I feel about having less stuff on my surfaces? And then when your prescribed period of time is over, perhaps you'll only wanna put half the things back on your surfaces. Perhaps you'll really think about what you're going to put on your surfaces. You'll be more deliberate about it. You see, the problem that we encounter so often as humans is we just get used to things. We don't really pay attention to things because we have to put so much on autopilot to focus on the things that we really do need to work on. So a lot of the clutter just becomes background noise, but it does build up over time. So shocking your system like this really helps you second guess everything that you have in your home. It's a great experiment to try. 
I love Chad, bless his heart, but honestly, we have a collection of cables that makes me sick. And he is sitting right over there and he is looking down at his iPad because he doesn't even want to make eye contact with me right now. And I feel like a lot of you guys are in the same situation. You see, we have cables like, I don't even know what they're for. There's like R2-D2 cables and plug-ems and stick-em cables. Like, I don't even know what these things are. They're all kinds of colors. And I typically don't like to enforce things in this house, but I've really laid down the law with Chad in this cable collection because it it sort of angers me in case you haven't been able to pick up on that. So cables are something that we are working on. It is, it is a work in, pro, in progress, but we are working on decluttering that right now. There ain't no such thing as an R2-D2 cable. Buying something for one specific purpose can end up not only costing you money, but making you have to store something that you don't really need. And then you'll hang on to it and you'll think, yeah, but maybe one day I'll need that thing. And then you never do. And then it just clutters up your space. So I'll give you a perfect example. A couple years ago, Chad and I joined Luke and his wife at a cottage that they had rented up north. And we had all these grand plans of going out on the lake, so we bought life jackets. Now, normally when Chad and I go out on the water, we go somewhere where we rent the water vessel, canoe, kayak, whatever it is, and life jackets come with that rental. But they didn't have any at the cottage, so we thought, okay, we'll just buy some. Well, guess what? We've had those life jackets in our garage for two years. While we were at the cottage, it rained the entire time, so we never ended up using them. But those life jackets still remain. And upon further conversation, Chad and I are just getting rid of the life jackets because we don't need them. And there's no point of hanging on to them because there's no opportunity in our near future that we're gonna use them. And if we go somewhere where we need life jackets, there's like a 94% chance that we're gonna be able to rent them. I don't know about you guys, but Chad and I are guilty of this. We kind of keep our old pillows just for emergency purposes. Like if we have a guest come over and they need to sleep over for the night, which by the way has never happened in the seven years we've lived in this house, but we still have these darn pillows. So here's the deal. I'm going to do this and you can do it too. Take your pillows, drop them off at the closest pet shelter. They're pretty much the only place that's going to take used pillows, but they actually really like them. And that will do you and your closet a service. And of course, the little tiny animals that get to sleep on the pillows will love you for it as well. A few weeks back, we did film a video about how I clean and organize my makeup area here in my office. And if you haven't done this already, I highly recommend decluttering some of the old makeup and hair products that you have in your home. Because you know, like this mascara, for example, it is definitely more than three months old. And if you know anything about mascara, you shouldn't have it around. So go through your makeup, pick out all the stuff that's old. If you need more details, we'll put the links to that video for you down below. And that will definitely free up some space in your home. When you open your drawer to grab a tea towel, which is what we call them in Canada, or a dish towel, you'll probably find some that are stained or have holes in them or just look beat up and you don't need those ones anymore. So go through that drawer and pull out anything that's not looking so hot or fresh. And what we've done is replaced all of ours with our Maker's Cleaning Cloths, our Waffle Weave Tea Towels. They're so absorbent, they're so amazing, and they're actually our best-selling single-pack cloths. You can find more about this at makersclean.com. But aside from that, the idea here, guys, is to go through, get rid of all those old dish towels, only have the pretty and nice ones that actually work and serve their purpose. Sometimes we buy medicine because we need it for a particular thing, but then that thing never comes back again. Thank goodness. But your medicine is still in the cabinet and it is probably expired. So if you want to toss something now, actually you got to toss it responsibly, go to your medicine cabinet, check all of the dates and get rid of anything that is no longer usable. Now what you need to do with the medicine is put it into zippered bags and take it to your pharmacist. They will help you dispose of it safely and if they can't do it for whatever reason, they'll let you know where to take it. So now you have several ways that you can start incorporating minimalism into your life. And that brings me to this comment question, which is, 
Do you currently practice a minimalist lifestyle? And if you don't, what do you think your biggest hurdle is? I know for me, it was the emotional side of things. It wasn't necessarily physical. It was more mentally being able to part ways with things. So I'd love to know what's keeping you out of that minimalist lifestyle in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds and the two of us are at Clean My Space. If you like our channel and you wanna support the work that we do, you can simply do so by watching another video right after this one. And here are a couple I think you might love. If you wanna learn about our Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.